Come on, Malcolm. Be a professional. Put it on silent. What kind of power scope is that? That's the army. <laughs> you won't find an Air Force guy doing that. <laughs> no. Oh! Yes, thank God. Win. <laughs> Look, she's just lugging that 25 oh, yeah, pound rifle right. around like it's no thing. You're a wild man, you know that? <laughs> Fighting sense. Look at him. Hand entry right off the bat. You better, Joel? Because we're going to start sweating, so we got to get this party started. Oh, you haven't started yet? <laughs> Welcome to Black Rifle Coffee's Veterans React. Today I'm joined by Josh and Andy at Tripwire Operations Group. So first up, I feel like everybody in the military has an opinion on the Hurt Locker. It seemed like it was so well received in Hollywood well, and everybody in the military just kind of Takes well, a dump they give on it. Catherine Bigelow, like best war movie, most authentic war movie yeah. ever made, or something. What? Yeah. Nonsense. Yeah. How many bombs have you disarmed? Eight hundred seventy-three. Counting today, sir. Yes. That's got to be a record. Have you seen it? What's that? No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> got better things to do in my life. I made my wife watch it just so she could be miserable with me, and I told her all the things that were wrong with it. All oh, this. Yep. What's so, your plan? At this point, what's your plan? What's Josh doing this scenario? Because at this point, I guarantee you the C-cell batteries in his power pack are dead. So now he doesn't have a fan cooling off his, his little visor. <laughs> and he's breathing heavy <laughs> because he has a pistol pointed at a V-bed. So now he's fogging up. At least his security is looking outwards and not watching what's going on with them. And now there's smoke. Somebody popped smoke. That was probably a ranger. <laughs> I thought, it, I thought it was a good idea to pop smoke. Oh, ooh. Uh oh. And it, and it's a Beretta, so look out. <laughs> Did they get that right? He'd be in so much trouble for this. Shooting that dude's window out. Like, other than him being in the, in the vehicle, and he is stopped now, there's no justifiable, they're not gonna be able to justify that threat. Per policy, I guess, we don't fire warning shots. If you fire a round, it better be going at a, an identifiable target that Yeah, you're I guess it depends what the rules of engagement would be at the time. Yeah. Just hear himself breathing. Wondering what, what are those clowns doing up there. Okay, so he starts pulling them out. He starts pulling these projectiles out of the ground. Let's say they're 155 millimeter projectiles. Yeah. And then they're connected with deck cord, which must be connected with JB Weld. <laughs> because he starts pulling that deck cord and <clears throat> lifting 125 plus pounds with it, and it doesn't come out. So is he going out there like in a scenario like this all well, right by now, himself? Right now he's talking sweetly to it to try to get it to surrender. Hey, man, just a pet give you a little pet pet. How does he know that's there? Does a dog hit on that? Or? A dog could have hit on it. Private Snuffy could have found it and saw it. There might be an intel report. A UAV could have washed this dude, put it in the ground. But knowing how badass this dude is, he probably sensed it. You're a wild man, you know that? <laughs> Fighting sense. Look at him, hand entry right off the bat. So when he starts cutting stuff, <clears> the <throat> other guys are looking around to see what's going on. They want to see, out of everybody hanging around and lingering, if somebody's starting to fidget or somebody's starting to take off. Real strongest man. Strongest man. Little known fact, World Strongest Man competition was actually held in, in Balad, Iraq. And uh, <laughs> Jeremy Renner just won it. He takes a deep breath. Dude, he lifts from the back. He doesn't even bend his knees. Like, <laughs> winning. Honestly, given the situation, there's no, I don't see any need for him to be doing what he's doing. I you mean, maybe, blow it? maybe that apartment building is full of people and they can't get him out of there. But still, he pulls that out of the ground. There's no reason why he shouldn't have immediately went back to his truck. Hey, does the robot work? And that's the thing with this. There's no set protocol. There's no established step one through ten. What's that release? Is that just like an emergency thing? or is So it that just he made... pulled? So yeah, yeah that's, the top of that suit has two handles. So somebody's got to help you get in it, but it's designed that if there's an emergency, something goes off, you're on fire, you're a heat casualty, whatever it may be, you can self-remove that. Why does he have His... Ear Pro on? So it, it's doubling as a radio. Oh, okay. He introduces this scene by I'm gonna die I'm gonna die comfortable he's not wrong everybody's thought it and said it multiple times yeah because given what they're showing in the trunk of this vehicle it's irrelevant yeah like what does the bomb suit do for you why have one on does it mitigate the blast does it mitigate overpressure or what it's primary is going to be blast overpressure and then secondary it has a small amount of fragmentation protection and then it has plates on the front and back that were um are ballistic rated for for high power rifles but in, in like in this situation it's it's not going to help and again what he's doing right now given the scene that is set in this, this car in the middle of this plaza open or whatever space, yeah unless I, I assume all these buildings are filled with people there's again no reason for him to be doing what he's doing step one is be as remote as possible yeah this whole 
hero hand knife cutting stuff up is like last resort there's an entire family of innocent people in that car you have no other option but to get in there and fix it right now yeah i feel like they're uh trying to label bomb tax as a certain personality type in this movie yeah as being the cowboy and yeah. you're the guy in the flaming car sergeant james that's just hot shit that's the army <laughs> <laughs> you won't find an air force guy doing that <laughs> It's up here. <laughs> Not here. They don't know what's going on, so they're trying to figure out all these people watching them. Does somebody have a phone? Are they recording them? They're trying to make sure this dude doesn't die from an external factor other than what he's doing. But assume there's wiring all through the, the car. Yep. So, like, so he, what's he looking for? Modern things like this are going to be designed certain ways, you know, by engineers. Yeah. They're going to be specific flow patterns. Things are going to be zip tied together, made to look pretty. The majority of the time, there's going to be something that's out of place. There's so gonna, he's just gonna, gonna a, strip the whole con center console. So right now out there? he found he found something and he's he's tracing, tracing it with his finger and it led oh, okay. him to the head unit and the radio. So now he's it's basically all right. That's where that clue leads. What do I find behind this? He's gonna find a sweet CD <laughs> or mixtape. Damn, it's, I'm the look of that thing like six months. <laughs> See now he goes up and he pops the hood. So whatever he found behind the radio runs up to the engine block. And now when he pops this hood, there's probably gonna be more than necessary batteries going to that vehicle's battery as a power source. So he just moves from one target to the next. All right, where does this go? What's it do? So in a scenario like that, though... Yeah, given the scenario the way they're presenting it, like, you have no time. They just saw a dude with a camcorder on, like, a whatever floor recording them. You gotta make a personal, moral, ethical, and professional decision. Who's in these buildings? Do I keep going and just keep cutting stuff and hope I get it? And if this goes, I go with everybody in these buildings? Yeah. Or do I just say, nope, I'm done? return me and my guys a safety and then try to explain to the families in these buildings why the it just fell on their heads so in in a situation like that then what do you do with all that ordinance so now but now that they that he's fixed that now they can bring in every joe they got in the area secure the entire area and they can spend as long as they want right tearing that car apart do you do any type of forensic analysis on it to like yeah, so there's, there's a tag it not the... not him specifically but there's an entire team exc combined explosive exploitation cell mm -hmm. they're, they're um multidisciplinary team that's what they do they do all the forensic stuff so any of the the tape the wires all that stuff that's not an explosive hazard he'll maintain and he'll send it back and they'll they have fbi individuals and, and they'll go through it and that's try great. to figure out who's what no, so, what, so why this you got all these so, all these trip wires here yeah. right so those are anti-personnel mines that they have planted they're buried in the ground they're canisters and once they're actuated through various methods they're designed to fly about chest height on a grown male yeah. meter meter and a half and basically explode and right here you can see that get the over pressure yeah blowing the muzzle first of all <laughs> that specific landmine doesn't have that much over pressure that's not going to happen <laughs> yeah it's anti-personnel so yeah. it's, it's going to be more fragged to, to to wound and maim they have trip lines the whole way down through that alley and one there's no fireball that doesn't happen and two you can whoever did their pyro for this movie is terrible you can see the fake cannons they have on each side Everybody's favorite movie, the best Irish accents ever. <laughs> Blown away. Don't give me your political bullshit. She's waiting for the rockets red glare. That was 25 years ago. doing you know what. Little cool. known fact, this is the movie that gave Forrest Whitaker, Forrest Whitaker eye. <laughs> oh, wow, that's so Real fact? <laughs> is that a real, is that scientific? <laughs> like, did he get blown up or something? Like, He's the one that has the headphone bombs and they're like working on it as he sits there trying not to move. I'm sorry, buddy. Give you Force Whitaker eye too if you were sitting with a bomb strapped to your head. Everybody knows what Force Whitaker eye is. Everybody. All right, let's go through this. Person. Got explosions. Oh, dude. Got explosions. The so, dude. I'm not used to seeing him so intense. He abides. Lebowski's on the case. According to the report, the guy can build bombs out of biscuit. I love the 80s style. Oh, how'd they do that? Impossible. Oh. Look. Oh. Hey, cool guys run towards explosions. It's in a tor yep. oh, oh, yeah. So he's got, what is oh, that like? You got a bunch of deck cord and deck cord. I, I don't know if those are really blasting caps or, or grenade fuses. For, but. Is that an actual scenario that, you know, outside of that, that has been used before? Like with the, the collar bombs or just people just like putting yeah, dead man the, switches on? The collar on. bomb thing's a, a big South American cartel type thing. Uh, like the Colombian neckties. They yeah. Call them Colombian neckties. Okay. That's, that's a whole having okay. a bomb strapped around your neck type thing. All right. I just, I just see that and I'm like, wow, that's excessive. 
<laughs> yeah, that's that's like a neck and chest. That's yeah, elaborate. Good job. That's not a bomb. That's an exoskeleton. He's, he's, he's actually <laughs> oh, dude, he's, little he's, known. Another little known fact: the actor and his character is actually a quadriplegic, and that's an exoskeleton to help him move to do his acting. <laughs> <Shut laughs> <up. laughs> Google it. No, <laughs> Google. Google it. It might be antennas. Antennas? Yeah. I don't know. That deck cord's gonna cut itself off. That's <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's terrible planning. He's got a lot of explosions going around him for this trailer. Yeah. Time's up. Time's up. Oh, oh no! Oh, he did it. The only thing. Thing I remember is the bad accent. You shouldn't have done that, Dad. So, what did you like about this movie? Uh, or is it just a complete wash for you? The stupidity wasn't over the top. They dramatized a little bit, but not quite as bad as everybody knows how terrible the Hurt Locker is. Strictly because of the something. period and the movies that it was built around, it's awesome. This was one of the first times that I saw a Ron's robot with two neutralizing with pans attached to it. Oh, really? With the dual mount tool system. Excessive amount of blasting cap, right? Yeah. I like that clock. There's a little bit of style added See, to it. Little known fact, that <laughs> clock was actually Tommy Lee Jones' character's retirement gift, and that's why it's built into the device <laughs> as kind of a, you know, to the Boston Police Department. <laughs> See how I did that softly? Very soft. There's a bomb. Just <laughs> You don't even know where my fingers are. <laughs> There's a nice zoom in on it. Beep, beep. Beep, beep. Oh. Oh, it's a bo oh. It's going. I honestly remember none of this. Really? The only thing I remember is the Forrest Whitaker scene. You know more about Forrest Whitaker than anyone I've ever met. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude, I haven't seen this. Since. So good. Oh, wait. <laughs> Hold on. Hold on. Little known fact, you can designate targets with a 99 cent gas station laser. <laughs> Oh, come on. Why do I always make it so clear? I always write right on the windowsill. Oh, man. Oof. So did you have a single eye patch that you wore? Yeah. Or did you have multiple for depending on what you were doing? I just want, yeah, just want Like one. varying like shades of darkness. <laughs> I, I feel like that Barrett break is is so easily recognizable compared to any other rifle platform. Pretty sure it would have jammed by now. <laughs> Stay pipe. Did you shoot the M107 or the M82 or? Yeah, the 107. Yeah, the 107, I noticed that too. If you're shooting like M33 out of it, yeah. there's a, a high probability, depending on who the manufacturer was, that you're gonna get a stovepipe or a uh, failure to extract. We had the M82, the A1. M82 will us. cycle anything. You can put nine millimeter in an M82 uh -huh. and it'll cycle. I never had any issue with that thing. Look, she's just lugging that 25 oh, yeah, pound yeah, right. around like it's no thing. Comparing like your kit versus, you know, something like that where it seems pretty freaking excessive. Oh, that, right? yeah, that's excessive. I mean, like, obviously, like, if you're carrying that on target, like, you either have vehicles or something out there with you. I mean, I guess you could jump in and lug it, but. What's your loadout, like, usually? Like, I would say mission dependent or yeah. situation dependent, whatever. Oh, this is when she goes crazy. Oh, yeah. Get after it. Get after it. She's not hitting a damn thing, though. She's got to be at eight by now. Well, that's a bigger than you. Oh yeah, mag. shoot that pistol back at her. Cause that standard mag is what ten? Ten rounds. Yeah, that ten thing rounds. looks twice as big. So I've always been told you can't shoot people with the fifty cal because it's an anti-material and it's against the Geneva Conventions. Is that true? I don't know. I've heard that as well. I, I don't, don't think that applies here. He's is like, this? Yeah. Oh, no, I meant Andy. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I fucking kill people all the time. <laughs> <laughs> no, but dude, there's, that, there's obviously like stories out there about like the Canadian sniper who's got the the longest shot, and that was with a fifty cal. This is sniper. Sniper. Yeah. I'll gillian up. All right. So they're stalking off on a village here. <laughs> uh, with women and children. <laughs> kind of, what kind of power scope is that? Did you zoom in that with HD like that? <laughs> yeah. this is pretty, and what uh, is that reticle? Like, how are you, how are you a, a red dot sight on a sniper rifle? I don't know. Was when, when was this movie made? 93. 93. I'm sure that technology was, was awesome back then. Oh, now we're different. Oh, now, yeah, yeah, what, now what is on the reticle there? Like, what is That's the, the symbol for a resistor. Little known yeah. fact is these high power <laughs> Scopes use a lot of electricity, so they gotta have resistance. How do you even get like your your windage on that? I don't know. Right there, see that apple went up and came down. Zero variation, no wind. <laughs> no wind. That was his wind call. <laughs> Take it. Oh, do it right Take there. Take it. Oh, right in the chest. There, I mean, there was no drop. Mm -mm. Oh. oh. Did they have laser guns then? Yeah, they must have. Smart, right? Took in his brass. Okay, yeah, it's not Taking a bad his idea. trash with him. For you, Andy, like when you go to watch any kind of military movie, is there any kind of like baseline expectations that they're gonna get it right? Or you're just like, I'm always setting the bar 
on the ground and I'm gonna step over it when I go in. I think you guys have the bar low. Like even like great films, like even like Saving Private Ivan or like uh, Band of Brothers, I mean, it's always got that Hollywood effect to it. Yeah, at this point, you just know that you have to just yeah. enjoy it for what it is. And... This is Jack Reacher. So we got a, a Jack Reacher audiobook on our last trip out to California and I was pretty disappointed. They make Jack Reacher sound like a freaking Sasquatch in the book. It's Tom Cruise. <laughs> Five foot <laughs> even, 130 pounds soaking wet. They always make a big deal about hand loading their rounds. Like, is that something that you're like, eh? No, I'm just <laughs> load the magazine. And... Do you have like brands that you were just partial to? You just knew that. No, I never got in the competition, so it's pretty much whatever the army would supply. To <laughs> <laughs> I like how he's got no so sand sock. He's just completely unsupported in the back. Don't be mad at him because he's a better shot. <laughs> yeah, I know. I mean, you're talking to a guy who learned how to skydive for Mission Impossible, right? Little window, known window, fact: window, oh. Tom Cruise <laughs> is a Halo jump master. <laughs> no. <laughs> Scientology blessed off on it. Bam. Back here at the Black Rifle Coffee offices in San Antonio. Let's just go ahead and jump into this week's uh, random comment. Uh, let's load this dude up. I'm gonna do I'm gonna do the Rambo video again real quick because um, I don't have uh, what would be last week's video uploaded right now. So um, let's just go ahead and pull this up. William Worth. I bet the NSA agent watching this right now can't stop talking about how awesome it is. Bam, dude! You can uh, just hit me up on Instagram. I think, again, like the YouTube direct messages are no longer a thing and everything, but uh, if you wanna reach out to me, uh, let me know if you want like a, a full mag or a Black Rifle coffee shirt, hat, uh, you want some lead farmer, you want some coffee or something like that, let me know and uh, I'll get that shipped out to you. If you live overseas, I don't know if I'm gonna drop that 50, 100 bucks or whatever to get you some get you some merch. I might just ship you some Bitcoin. So if that's a thing for you, let me know. Um, Bitcoin is just so easy. I'm not even gonna go down that rabbit hole. It's just too easy. Um, yeah, let me know. Again, last week was a, a pretty big video and everything. And I'm, I'm kind of trying to figure out still some of the, how do I maintain the balance of firearms, explosive stuff here and not completely get demonetized and deranked on everything um, you know I've been running some tests over the last actually last few years between um, Black Rifle Coffee and Best 11X and myself and uh, I see that I'm getting throttled in a lot of ways probably because um, my content over the years has been so heavily um, tagged and keyworded and involved firearms so much so uh, I'm still trying to figure that out. If there's any kind of really epic slow-mo stuff that may not pertain to, you know, 30 millimeter, 20 millimeter <laughs> large caliber guns or something like that, let me know. I've been thinking about doing some stuff, you know, whenever I was um, over at Reddit Red, you know, we went and did some stuff on rally and some drifting and everything. I was thinking maybe that could be make for an, I, was, oh, I can't even talk. I was thinking maybe I could do some stuff like whenever I was over at Rated Red, I went to rally school and did some stuff with Ford and everything. I could potentially do some stuff on drifting. I think that'd make for some epic slow-mo content and everything. But yeah, I'm just trying to come up with some ideas. So I really, really appreciate y'all's feedback and everything because last thing I want to do is just start uploading some stuff onto the channel here and you not appreciate it or not want to see it and everything. So uh, I got some pretty epic stuff. Um, I don't want to give out all the details, but it's going to involve lasers and some really, really like precision firearms like it, it's gonna be epic I've been working on this for it's arguably the most requested video I've ever had and I've been working on it for a few years so I'm really really excited to uh, hopefully if everything goes as planned show you this this video in the next month or so uh, also have another couple of videos that uh, I've been working on too that should be a lot of fun so anyways I've, I've just rambled on enough all right I'll see you guys next week Bam.